start copying over. We'll tell Bravo 1, copy, return to base in 2 0 bytes. Over. Good evening. I'm an American. I'm a conservative. I'm an oath keeper. Jesus is my king. And I love this country. My name is Max. They call me Mad Max. And I got the name Mad Max when I was a ranger instructor. I was hard on the ranger students, but I was fair. And so they, you know, just started as the Mad Max, and so the monarchy just stuck. I also want to say that I want to thank you for the invite out here to talk to my fellow, fellow patriots and, and citizens. It's an honor to be before you. Hope you get some out of this. Like I said, I love this country. It's the greatest country in the nation, in the world. I served 26 years in the military and had the opportunity to travel all over this world. And from my many travels, and my fellow veterans can even attest to this, we do live in the greatest nation in the world. The greatest nation in the world, with emphasis on that. I was born here back in Alabama, Fort McClellan, back in 1958. My great-grandfather was born here back in 1839. My grandfather was born here in the late 1800s. And so I'm an American. I'm not an African American. <laughs> I've never been Africa. I have no desire to go to Africa. It's the only country that I know is America. And I love this country. My birth certificate does not say African American. My birth certificate says Negro, which means black and Portuguese. So I'm a black American, but I like to be called an American because I help build this country. The only African American I see in here is Fred Brownville. <laughs> the reason I call myself an African American is because what happened is I'm not a refugee here. You have the Palestinians. The Palestinians, they speak Arab. They're no different than the Syrians or Jordanians. They're Arabs. They speak the same language, but they call themselves Palestinians, which is, you know, um, well, we don't have a country. Well, you got your, your people are the same people. By calling me African American, that's letting you know, making make me feel like I'm a sojourner here. This is not my home. I'm just here temporarily that my home is the motherland, which is far from it. This is the only country I know. Yeah. It's America. Yeah. And so what they like to do, they like to call this, you, you, the race card out. Throw the race card out what it does is call it dissension. We should be so far past all this racial strife is pathetic. If you want to know what racial strife is, you go to some of these European countries. You want to see racism. 
I get up in the morning, I go to work, I work hard, just like anybody else. But I am an American. And again, Jesus is my king. The Bible says in the second part of the 714 that my people who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Our country is facing a moral problem. Moral problem. They're taking God out of this country. They're taking God out. We live in such an atheism is on the rise. We send our kids off to school, they come back atheists. The Bible also says, turn up a child in the way they should go. But when they get older, they will not depart from their way. So it's up to us as parents to train up our children. Godly way, biblical way. To train up our children above the Constitution. Because if not, our kids spend more time in public school, the government school, than they do with us. I remember many times as a kid, I come home, my mother, she worked. I come home, the family at 6 o'clock. The family get together, we ate. It was our chance to fellowship, what went on in school, and so forth. But now you don't see that in families. Everybody's going their separate ways. Our school system is failing us. Our school system is ran by the government. I tell you, there's no good thing that comes out of the government. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And all this is intentionally. They have destroyed the family unit. The Bible says. Therefore, a man, not significant other, not, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, or, you know, homosexual couple, but therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, in that order, man, woman, shall leave his father and his mother and cleave right. unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. I mean, one in the spirit, spiritual bond. So this isn't yours, this isn't mine, this is ours. The family unit. When you destroy the family unit, you destroy the family. So you wonder why crime is on the rise. You wonder why you have all these gangs. These kids want acceptance. When you raise in a single parent home, you know, my, my hat is off to all the young ladies who, who raise a kid, but you need a man. You need a man. But what they use against us, the liberals and stuff use against us, oh, submission. They make submission. A dirty word. I submit myself unto my God. I submit myself to God. So my wife, she submits herself to me, but in a godly way. And the children submit herself unto the parent. Submission, but they made it into a dirty word. So it's up to us, it's up to us as parents to train up our kids. We can't let the government get in there. Our school systems are failing us, like I said before. I'm very active. I go to school, I intimidate the teachers. I do it intentionally because when you intimidate them, you let them know that I do not play. When Barack Hussein Obama was speaking, I went up to the school and said, my child will not be in the classroom when that president speaks. Oh, it's the moment, but he's going to talk all the time. No, 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 no. I'm my child's role model. I trained my child. I don't need this man to try and tell me how to run my family. They already tell us what to feed our kids in school. They already tell us that you don't need that gun. You don't need that magazine, I can pass a magazine. You don't need no semi-automatic weapon. My thing is, who are you to tell me what I can have and can't have? I have my second amendment rights. I love guns. I can buy enough guns. I love guns. Guns have been a part of our history. The slaves used guns when the Ku Klux Klan came to get them. It was a gun that protected the family. We're living in a godly nation. It is time for the citizens of America to come together as one. This is not a black or white issue. This is an American issue. We have a president. Barack Obama is the worst president in history. This man is a fraud. The biggest fraud in the history of this country being perpetrated right before our eyes and what we're doing like lambs, like, like lambs to the slop. We're just following up. This man is intentionally destroying this country.
But if you speak out about me, you're a racist, then what that makes me? <laughs> the man is a fraud. He's a fake. He's a Decepticon, like the Transformers. And his main mission is to destroy this country. He, he, he picks brother against brother. You go to any of these colleges, I mean, you got these 1960 rejects that are indoctrinating our kids. And why? Because the parents aren't being involved. The people without vision perish. And I refuse to give up this fight. Yeah, I'm going to watch this, but you know I'll wear that as a badge of honor. You know where I stay at? But I refuse to back down and stand down. They're intentionally destroying the greatest fighting force in the history of mankind, the United States Army. They have a bunch of bumbling idiots up there in Washington, D.C. trying to intentionally destroy this country. You have this, you have this discussion about women in combat. And so I'm going to tell you my the bad match feeling about women in combat. I would be ashamed as a nation to see women on the front line engaging in the enemy. I would be ashamed as a nation. But the first thing you do, well, the other nations do it. We're not followers. We're not followers. Well, Israel does. Yeah, Israel is a small country about the size of New Jersey, and they have bad guys 360. But their women do not engage in the red line combat. They teach MPT tactics, but they do not engage in front line combat. We live in what we call, I'll call it an American Idol syndrome. American Idol syndrome. We are so and more about American Idol that we don't even know anything about politics. This is how this president got elected out of popularity. Popularity. He, he's Speaks good, he looks good, a glib tongue, but he has no substance. He's an empty suit, he's a hat, he's a fraud. You're right. And so what do you do? Oh yeah, we're gonna see women in the combat. Now, men and women are, are physically, genetically different. And what they do, they try and use these case studies. Well, she can do 300 and something push-up. She's run ultra marathons. She can do this and do that. Okay, why is she playing in the NFL? Because they see a 350-pound 350, uh, 350 lineman bearing down on his 125-pound lineman, and he hits her and almost kills her. Oh, no, we can't do that. Why aren't women playing in the NBA? The skill sets are different. It's not putting down women. Women, you know, uh, women are a part of the family, the group. But when you start putting all these unexpected expectations on them, it's not fair. And then you induce the women into a unit. They said, I'm telling you right now, when you induce men and women and into a basic training and stuff, it does not work. You open yourself up to scandal. And it happened from General Petraeus on down. They said, you have to be professional. But you know what? Why put a soldier in that situation? It's like taking matches and throwing them into a bucket of gasoline waiting for something to happen. Now, you have the women going to go in combat. They want to go into ranger school. I said, you have to be out of your mind if you want to go to ranger school. I'm telling you right now. And so, okay, we have this false expectations, right? When you see the fall of white women gallantly fall over there in Afghanistan and Iraq, you know, hats off. But they fall in convoys, big convoys, they engage the enemy. They go to a fob, they fight from the fob, but do not go into sustained combat. There's a difference. When I jumped in a Grenada, I jumped in with over 110 plus pounds. And we did extended operations. Now, imagine, if you will, a 55 pound rucksack, heavy body armor with your ballistic plates in it, and you have to carry a 240G machine gun, basic combat load, don't forget the mortar ammunition that you carry. Don't forget the law you have to carry, don't forget the grenades, plus the basic double load ammunition, because you don't know how they're going to be out. Then you go on a 10-mile force road march to the ORP, get to the ORP, 
we had to conduct a raid on the enemy, induce capture on the enemy, close up, close in fighting, go from the raid into the war for you, get to Rucksack Zone, and by the way, you have another 15 miles to travel to establish a patrol base. Then you get to your patrol base, and you start planning again for an additional mission. So you're still out there, so you look at resupply because you're not going back in. The average soldier in Vietnam stayed out there some for two weeks at a time. It's unsustainable. But then the way Panetta backdoored it, oh, by the way, this is my last day. At, when are you going to come back? Oh, I'm out of here. It's your problem. You take care of it. It's a coward. It's a coward. The president's a coward. The whole administration up there, you have a secretary of state, <laughs> John Kerry, whose picture is in a museum in Hanoi, a painter museum. John Kerry, the same man who threw his medals over the White House lawn, who sat up there and said American soldiers were baby killers. And he's the secretary of state. What's wrong with this picture? Am I the only one to see this? I feel like a prophet. Lord, am I the only one? Get up off of your face. That 77,000 others will not bow their knees down the back. So we're not the only ones in this fight. We have to take back our country. We cannot be spineless, but I cannot stand a coward. In the Bible, the first thing he said is send the cowards home. Get rid of them. Go, 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 go. Cowards. Get rid of them. But you know why? Because they're going to stop fearing the rest of the men. I'm in this for the long run. And the only way we can take this country back is you, 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 you. We all come together as one. We are living in historic times. You know, biblical history biblical prophecies being fulfilled before our eyes, you know, but it is not the time to give up. Just like Jonah, you had the city of Nineveh. God told Jonah, Jonah, go to Nineveh right now and you tell them, people, I want to take them out. Jonah didn't want to go. Because you know why? He knew that God so merciful that he will, that if they heard the word of God, they will repent. We all know the story. Jonah got swallowed by the well, and he went. Because God has his way of getting your attention. We all had that Jesus moment. So he went to Nineveh, and he preached to Nineveh, and they repented. But Nineveh eventually fell. But Jehu will repel. We have to, right now, they won this last election through voter fraud. I said it, voter fraud. They use this welfare system. Welfare is like crack cocaine. It's like meth. You get on it, you can't get off of it. Because you know why? I have my family members on welfare. It's insidious. Welfare, they control every asset and facet of your life. From how much money you got in your bank account? Oh, what do you do with this TV? Oh, we're going to do Unannounced inspection, you're going to stop by your house, you're going to be there. Well, I got to, you're going to be there. They control your life. More people getting on food stamps, boom, 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 boom. They slowly string like strict nine poisoning. The Bible said, a little leaven left the whole lump, so a little bit will destroy the whole thing. But it's up to us as citizens to come together. Now, we're fighting against the mainstream media. You cannot believe anything the media say. Nothing. Even Fox News. I don't believe nothing the media says. Nothing. ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox. Because you know why I'm telling you right there. You need to find information for yourself. Just like the x file the truth is out there. It's like a mosaic puzzle. Pull it together, pull it together, this sort, this sort, and when you put it together, you know what you're going to say? Oh my God, I've been lied to. I've been lied to. You cannot believe anything that comes out of that president's mouth. 
nothing. He is a liar. He is a, every word out of his mouth is a lie. You cannot believe nothing that man says. Nothing. He like the boy. He loved his father the devil. He was a liar from the beginning. There's no truth found in him. You can't trust the man. He will lie in your face. That whole administration is nothing but a big facade. He's nothing but a puppet on a string. There's power behind this to manipulate this man, and he wants the utter destruction of this country. It's all about the brown vote. And their favorite word is, we must pass this now. We must do this now. we got to do this now. We can't do this now. We're going on vacation to Hawaii. <laughs> Sometimes being a black man has an advantage because I can talk about the guy. I ain't worried about what they say about me. I've been called every name in the book by my own people. But you know what? I don't care because you know what Jesus said? Therefore, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You know what? I'm free. I'm, not, I'm no longer a slave of the plantation. I'm not free. I'm free. I'm free. But I want to challenge each and every one of you. Pray. It's powerful. Prayer. I had my Jesus moment. But again, I mean, it's God and the country. When you take God out of the equation, you have nothing left. Nothing. I have so many friends out there who are atheists and stuff, but you know what? You cannot be a jellyback. You cannot be a jellyback because what they're doing right now is they're demasculating the male species. Unisex. Oh, Joey. Oh, Joey, it's, it's okay. It's no ABCs. You just do the best you can. I hate losing. I hate losing. If you're not first, you're last. But they're training our kids. Oh, it's okay. it's okay, Joey. It's okay to do this. They're making our kids. They're making the young male effeminate. Where are the real men? They make a mockery of the cowboy broke back mountain. They're intentionally doing this. They intentionally take the male out of the equation. You look at these movies, right? That's why you got this women in combat stuff. You have, oh, you have like Salt, you know, you have Tomb Raider, you have um, Starship Trooper, where there's women and stuff, stuff like that. <coughs> because it's all being done intentionally. The men stand up, take back what's ours, take back our rifle homes, set aside. At least two or three days a week where you eat together the family. Get involved. Because if you're not, you know what? Somebody is. Because you know what? A generation is 10 years. The children of Israel, when they came out of Israel, they said they were the generation that did not know what the God of Israel, the miracle he performed by bringing them out of Egypt. They forgot about that. So they start cold mingling with the nation around about them, and look what happened. And that's exactly, exactly what's happened to America. Exactly what's happened to America. We have to come together as a nation. I cannot stand liberals. I cannot stand Democrats. For those who don't know, they're trying to rewrite history. That's why I try to find dictionaries from the 1930s and stuff. Because they're not politically correct. That's why you can't believe anything. Wikipedia, Wikipedia, that's a source of information. I like going to flea markets, getting them old encyclopedias because they're not politically correct. You can't believe anything they say. They rewrite history right before our eyes. And because these kids are not engaged, that's what we're getting. That's what you get. So in closing, I'm going to say this. You live in the greatest country in the world. Why do you expect everybody wants to come to America? Everybody wants to come to America. This is the only home I know. The only home. I love each and every one of you. 
each and every one of you. There's no black, there's no white, it's America. We're so far past that you get that racism stuff. And you, you see how racism like calling hollering fire fire theory. Oh, everybody backed up. Don't, don't, don't believe in hype. Don't get caught up in the game. Don't, don't get up and stand for what you believe in. And don't take one step back. Don't be a coward, don't be a jelly bag, don't be a spineless wonder. Stand up, America. Get involved. Get involved in grassroots. Come together. And we can take our country back. And in closing, I want to say this. In closing, in closing. <laughs> Stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his mouth. God bless America. Good copy. Wait one. Over. Yeah, I told you. Hotel round one. This is base. QRF alerted ETA. Go location one zero mics. Request status of WIAs. Over. Base. This is hotel round one. Whiskey India Alpha times three. One critical. Over.